Welcome to the Ask Dr. Deanna Show. I'm Dr. Deanna Holdren, your host. Join me weekly as I cover various health-related lifestyle medicine topics that you get to request. This show is for anyone who wants to proactively improve their health position. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. It is so good to be back with you after a little break over the summer. I hope you had a fantastic summer. Uh, We are starting uh, the podcast back up. Uh, The Ask Dr. Deanna podcast uh, will be going forward on a weekly basis and uh, super excited uh, to uh, bring some new content to you, uh, some new ideas uh, and so forth. Uh, I hope that you will reach out uh, with your questions. You know, we love getting questions from uh, those who follow us and and uh, just, you know, ask those questions, whether it's on our Facebook page, Instagram, you know, whatever, even our, our website uh, to basically um, we take those questions and turn them into topics many, many times. So uh, I'm excited about it and uh, it's going to be a fantastic fall moving forward here, you guys. So uh, today I want to talk a little bit about gut health and immunity. You guys know, for those of you who know me, you know that gut is one of my favorite topics. And uh, I think oftentimes about all of the images that we see um, pertaining to gut issues. And it's usually the woman who's doubled over. She's holding her abdomen, you know, or she's got this big pooched out bloated thing going on, um, you know, and she's trying to, you know, fix that before swimsuit season or whatever. And uh, basically, you know, what we know is that if your tummy's a mess, if your gut is a mess, you are a mess, uh, bottom line. And, you know, when you look at the, what are some of the symptoms, some of the issues that we see that are associated with, with poor gut health or gut issues, um, we see a lot of obviously bloating, a lot of indigestion, a lot of uh, some symptoms from something called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We've talked about that on a previous podcast. Um, we see see issues, whether it's diarrhea, constipation, um, you know, abdominal pain, so many issues, but it goes further than that, so much further than that, because what's going on in your gut actually dramatically affects your immune system. And um, we were going to talk about that a little bit today, but when you look at the gut, not only does it affect the digestive process and what's going on there, but it's the immune system. It's the brain. It's, you know, autoimmune system. It is the endocrine system. It is the cardiovascular system. Pretty much every system is affected by the gut. So if you have poor gut health, okay, and how do you know uh, if you do? Well, if you have any of those symptoms, then you do, okay? Even brain fog can be a symptom of poor gut health. Uh, Also, if you are eating the standard American diet, which is uh, pretty much a a very processed food diet, a lot of things that are in a package, a bag, a box, drive through window, that sort of thing, um, you also are going to have issues with your gut as well. So that's how you know. And And sometimes people don't know how badly they feel until they make a change and clean things up and start eating, you know, healthy foods again. And then at that point, they go, oh my gosh, I just didn't even realize that this was so related to what I was eating. So when we look at gut health, you know, we have to talk about the microbiome. The microbiome is uh, basically this massive um, amount of microorganisms that live inside of your GI system. These microorganisms live in your small intestine. Uh, They live also in your large large intestine, which is also known as the colon. And when we have a good, healthy balance, um, things work well and we feel good and, you know, that's great. Uh, but when things are not working well, we start to have some of those symptoms. We even can see things like leaky gut, um, where you basically have a membrane that's become more permeable than it should be, a membrane meaning the lining of the gut. And you've got toxins and basically poo, um, you know, bacteria from that crossing that membrane and going out into the body, uh, causing a lot of, you know, detrimental health effects uh, from that standpoint as well. So when we look at this, the the microbiome, uh, things like poor diet, um, you know, also things like eating a lot of um, uh, or taking a lot of antibiotics. Maybe you've had a lot of infections uh, over your lifetime uh, or whatever, but those things can can have a huge impact on the health of the microbiome. Uh, so when you look at historically the way that we used to eat, and I'm saying basically go back 50 years ago, 
50 years ago, uh, people typically would plant a garden. They would eat a lot more uh, vegetables from the garden. They might eat fruits from their property as well. Uh, And then they also cooked from home. We didn't have all the fast food uh, options that we have today necessarily. That wasn't readily, readily available. And so they cooked more at home. Uh, They actually ate a lot of fermented foods as well, uh, from sauerkraut to sourdough bread to um, just a lot of different, um, you know, products uh, that 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 you would use, and that actually helped the micro the gut. It helped the microbiome uh, in terms of the diversity of the 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 bacteria that are in there, which meant better digestion. Okay, so today. One out of four people has to take some sort of digestive aid on a regular basis, whether that be an over-the-counter, um, what we call a proton pump inhibitor, which would be like a Prilosec uh, or a Prevacid. Um, you know, you might see, you know, Protonics, uh, you know, one of those or Tums or whatever. But basically, one out of four people has to take some sort of digestive aid. So this is definitely a problem. Okay, so many people have issues here, and that's why I want to really just focus on this and talk about, well, what what is going on? Yes, the diet, okay, the processed foods, yes, the antibiotics, you know, play in there as well, but we also have to look at, you know, that that nasty, nasty chemical that's used uh, in, in our country and in many other countries as well, but glyphosate. Uh, glyphosate is an industrial, um, you know, agricultural product uh, that is mass sprayed on crops, and, you know, we end up eating uh, some of that because there's a residue of it that, that basically makes its way into our grains, uh, in particular. Particular, and that residue is going to interfere with the microbiome. Specifically, it's going to render a, a gut strain or a, a gut a bug called uh, Bacillus coagulans. It's going to make it ineffective. Okay, and so it, in a sense, it's sort of like it's killing it off. Okay, so then when that happens, okay, now we're not functioning properly, and not functioning at optimal levels, and we see all of these disease states crop in. And some of the biggest ones that I have to deal with every single day in my medical practice, I am dealing with a tremendous amount of anxiety and depression uh, would be one. And you know, we know that if your gut's not functioning, you are not making appropriate levels of serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter that that allows us to feel ha- happy and healthy and joyful. So when you look at that, um, you know that is a big, big problem. Uh, on top of that, so the anxiety and depression. Uh, when I see that, oftentimes if somebody. Uh, you know, sometimes people just want a medication, but if they are willing to do the work, we actually start with the gut and cleaning that up and getting good nutri- nutrition into their body uh, and see how they do with that before jumping to medication. Uh, but also the other big, big area that that I deal with continuously in my practice is this whole issue of autoimmunity. Um, We have had so many more autoimmune conditions being diagnosed. Uh, I think that um, statistically, if if we, you know, here in the next few years, you will see, um, you know, some research coming out that is talking about the massive numbers of autoimmune conditions that have come about uh, as our immune systems have been weakened, as people have, you know, uh, just for a variety of reasons, as we went through the pandemic, all of that stuff, you know, we've got way more autoimmune issues going on. And one of the best things that we can do to help protect ourselves or prevent that, or even if you have an autoimmune issue like me, um, you know, correcting the gut microbiome, making sure that that is healthy, that it is functioning properly is only going to improve your overall health uh, picture, your overall health status. And so, so this is a big, big deal because it is probably one of the you know, biggest factors in medicine. And when you see these autoimmune issues, you know, that has an impact on so many other systems within the body, um, from the endocrine system to the cardiovascular system to, um, you know, of course, the GI system, and then also even the brain. Uh, So another hot spot or hot area when it comes to the microbiome is this whole gut brain connection. And the fact that if your microbiome is not healthy, you're not going to be able to think clearly. You're not, you're, you're maybe going to struggle with some brain fog um, and maybe just not be as sharp. 
as you as you once were or as you would like to be. So I'm a big believer that we all have uh, areas that we can improve in, and this is certainly one of them. I think that no matter how healthy you are, uh, there are there is an opportunity for you to improve your health position just by making some simple changes. Okay, uh, and so one of the simple changes in terms of the gut uh, would be. Let's boost our immune system, okay? Let's give our body what it needs so that it can function the way that it's supposed to. Let's boost our immune system. Let's clean up the gut. How do we do that? You guys, it's so simple, okay? And the crazy thing is, is I, I've actually had physicians before say, this sounds too simple. Uh, but then you try it and you go, oh my goodness, this is amazing. What a difference this has made. So to clean it up, number one, we have to eliminate Okay, we have to get rid of the things that are causing the problem. Okay, so that's a lot of grain. You know, if you've listened to my podcast before, you've probably heard me say um, that in the U.S. anyway, we are grain fed. Okay, um, we eat way too many carbs, and so many of those carbs are loaded with that glyphosate. So we need to reduce the carbohydrate content, reduce the grain that is in our diet. It's also contributing to insulin resistance, uh, type 2 diabetes uh, as well. We'll talk about that in the next episode. Uh, but basically, we we want to uh, eliminate the things that are derailing. So eliminating all of the excess carbs, all of the grain, eliminating all of the processed foods, these empty calorie foods that have are loaded that are loaded with chemicals uh, that are going to cause toxicity issues or you know going to uh, disrupt the gut flora, you know that sort of thing. So we want to get rid of those. Uh, we also want to look at um, you know replacing, so eliminating those, and then replacing um, that good, healthy uh, microbiome. So I love Bacillus coagulans; it's one of the top-rated probiotics uh, in the marketplace. And uh, again, it's going to help restore things and give you a good, healthy uh, balance. Um, you know, looking at gut diversity, eating uh, some of those fermented foods, that would be fantastic as well. Uh, so we got to eliminate the bad. We got to put the good back in and let that grow. So we want to help uh, support the microbiome and so that the good bacteria can populate and do what they're supposed to do. Uh, we can do that by eating uh, or consuming um, what we call a prebiotic. A prebiotic is simply a, a food source for the probiotic. It's what the bacteria like to eat. And, uh, you know, those are oftentimes available. The, the probiotic that I like um, has a prebiotic, probiotic, and digestive enzyme all rolled into it, um, into one, and, and that works great. Uh, but there are many that are available out uh, in the marketplace. And then there are also foods, um, specific fibers um, that, that you can use. Chicory is one, inulin is one, but basically a lot of fiber uh, can act as a prebiotic to feed the, the, the probiotic. Uh, also um, things like onions and garlic and some of those things. Uh, so there are certain foods that also will help uh, to uh, support the microbiome so that it can be healthy, so that it can uh, proliferate or grow and uh, ultimately put us in a better health position, right? Everybody wants that. Everybody wants to, you know, have that thin abdomen that, you know, without the bloating, uh, they want to be able to have proper digestion. Uh, they want to be able to, uh, you know, have normal bowel movements. They want to be able to think clearly uh, without brain fog. Uh, we want to be able to have healthy joints uh, without, you know, joint pain, which is often an, an issue. Uh, and we want to, to be healthy and happy and not have a tremendous amount of anxiety and depression and all of these other you know, reactions that, 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 that many times people have to emotions uh, because the emotions are running wild because our microbiome is a mess, all right? So you can see this one thing, okay, going after the one thing. If you said, what's the best thing I could do for my health? I would have to pick between correcting your gut microbiome and possibly reversing insulin resistance, which is what we're going to talk about in next week's uh, podcast. We'll talk about um, insulin resistance and 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 how that pertains to weight loss as well. Uh, but I hope that this has been helpful, you guys. Um, you know, my goal is just to help people, um, you know, live a healthy, vibrant, 
of life, to be able to feel good, to be able to think clearly, to be able to go out and 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 be the best that you can be. That's what we all want, right? So thanks so much for joining me today. I'm excited to be back and I hope that you'll plug in next week as we talk a little bit about weight loss, a little bit about insulin resistance and uh, how to get control of that. So thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed that episode. For more information, visit me at DeannaHoldren.com. Find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dr. Deanna Holdren. I really want to hear from you, so message me. I love taking your messages and creating topics from them. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share my show with those who have an interest in health and wellness. Thank you for tuning in and see you next week.